Hope everybody's having a really good day. Back at it again. Putting some speakers up. Got one up already. I've actually, uh, there's an option for square grills and I bought those, but I'm gonna put them up at the end. So they, you know, that's just up there to keep the speaker from getting damaged. So when we're done and at the end, I'll put the square grills up to match the lights. All right. Ta-da. Then it has the grills packed up in there. And it has this stuff, some instructions, and a little plastic cover. So that's it. That's that little plastic deal that we'll take out. Even though it's a four inch speaker, it takes a six inch hole. So it's not like with lights. <clears throat> so I use the spider kit again. There's the kit I use. I had to purchase that separately uh, to get that six inch. And I just didn't have the cameras out when I was cutting it. Literally this cut through that wood. And this is hard heart pine too. And it cut through it in no time. It was 20 seconds maybe. I don't even think it was that long. Now usually in a four inch, you know, if I'd cut this hole in a sheetrock ceiling, then this would just pop right in no problem. In wood, because you know, the sheetrock will give a little bit. In wood, uh, it's pretty tight, but I'm able to get it in there. So I could have got a slightly bigger hole saw, but I didn't know that at the time, but I said, it'll go in. So we'll pop that in. Normally you would have to take your screwdriver and you drill and then it kicks the little dog legs out and then those tighten down to the ceiling but these have just a push button deal so you don't have to even get up here with the drill or anything so I'll show you that all right so we've got the speaker in so you just go to the little red button and that's it it's locked in in this case I can get to the speaker wires I haven't actually put them exactly where I want them yet so I'll connect all that in the attic normally I would have had the speaker wires hanging out and went ahead and made the connections but in this case you just pop it up and then it also has an option where I can have it less trouble or more trouble I usually leave that flat sometimes I'll adjust it depending on how it ends up sounding but uh there you go welcome back to the farm back in here working on the punts list and guess who came in to help me out? That's right. Josh took a break from college for Labor Day and instead of relaxing and barbecuing, came to help his old man. All right, so we are basically just punch lists and stuff now. You know, it's go back, tie wires up. Let me show you an example. All right, so like here in the kitchen, you know, we've got all these wires we ran that are just hanging, all right? So they all have a purpose. They all have a place to go. So today we'll be putting boxes up. These will run into the box. I usually hang about seven inches out of the box or so, you know, something to work with. And then whatever, whatever, that, let's say the box is going here, then whatever's left gets room X stapled up in the center. Well, it'll be on this side, but whatever, up the wall. And then the excess will get pushed into the attic. Once we've done all the rooms that way, we'll go into the attic and where the wires are coming out, we'll start tying them up there till they go back to the central spot, which is what we call a trunk line. We'll show that. Then we'll work our way down towards where the trunk line goes. In the case of the low voltage, it'll work its way towards this bundle. In the case of the high voltage, most of it will work its way towards these bundles. And once they're neat and tidy and tied up in the attic, whatever excess we ended up with that we had pulled too much on the other end will be here. And we'll just work our way tying all that up till it goes in. So all the excess Romex will end up in the mechanical room and all the excess low voltage will end up here. Uh, there's a certain length I'm looking for. Too long is better than too short. <laughs> so I probably won't even cut it back any. In the mechanical room, I'll go ahead and remount the Crestron lighting panel and the sub panel, which we had to take out for them to build that false wall. And I'll go ahead and get the wires in there and cut those back and have them ready. And then we'll be finally ready for inspection. So they can come in and tell me what's wrong so I can fix that. Uh, but once we pass the inspection, uh, then 
We ready for insulation. And then after that, then we can do some sheetrock and then, you know, then we just move along with it, all the little tasks. Um, once sheetrock is up, I feel like we're halfway, which I know a lot of people probably think, oh man, look at all the stuff you got done. It's built, it's wired and all that. But there's so, you know, this stuff goes faster. There's so much little intricate detail, you know, when it comes to doing trim out, which is putting devices in all the boxes we're putting up. Um, you've got trim work, you got paint. So yeah, so once, once you see sheetrock on the wall, right now I feel like we're, we're closing in on about a third of the way done. And uh, but once we get to sheetrock, I'll feel like we're about halfway and then just depends on time, how time permits and money permits, depends on uh, how fast we get to the finish line. All right, I'm gonna try some voice over again. I am actually up in my studio today. Josh is here in the master. She's so tying up wires uh, that come up that degree there. Putting, uh, securing everything and running it the way it needs to be and then pulling it tight. I come in, probably give him some advice that he doesn't listen to. And, uh, you know, lots of ladder work as some people have noticed before. I'm back up in the attic now. Tightening all that up. Just continuing to work through the massive amount of wires. Josh has asked me why we have so many wires. And he's just tying up wires. You know, this area we're looking at is over the uh, bedroom at the back of the house. So he's, you know, having to walk around on the ceiling joists. This is his least favorite part of the house when he has to do any work. Because, you know, with the uh, HVAC guys and the, all the, um, as you see, all the duct work up there and, um, you know, fear of falling, I guess. It's a little hard to do. But anyway, so he's tacking things up to the uh, roof choices that come up and then pulls the wires, as we talked about earlier, more towards the head end. So just untangling wires, getting things neat and straight. You know, it doesn't, this is one of those things that doesn't really change the performance of the system in the end, but of course it, uh, a few things, obviously it's better to look at when it's all clean, but you know, someone else has to come and work in this area, you know, it's up and out of the way, so less prone to damage. Also, let's say we have to fix something in the future, you can find what you need, you know, just, uh, you know, we're, we'll probably have a day or so of tying things up and knitting up stuff but just works out better so he's gonna do that for a little bit now we're uh, the camera the GoPro is actually sitting on top of one of the air boxes the air hammer boxes and we're looking towards the front of the house and in front of him now is the uh the pull down ladder so that's where we're at in the house so you see all the excess length that we've ended up pulling back to this area so he'll do the same thing you know he's uh tacking wires up uh, getting things up and neat and supported probably cussing me I'll just get all that pulled back. You'll start seeing those loops go up if you're paying attention. You'll see them uh, start going up towards the ceiling here in a minute. I had to pull some stuff back first. Uh, those are wires that go down and over into the living room. So the air handlers in the way made it very uh, much more difficult. It would have been better for us to finish before they did the HVC, but you know, right now with everyone scheduled, you've got to get them in when you can and uh, keep rolling. So a little more difficult, but no big deal. Keep on rolling. I see he's going to work his way down. And oh, there I went. What am I doing? I'm messing around.
So it's just continuing to attack wires up as they go across. And now he's starting to do a little bit more with the feeds. So that's a pretty thick bundle that goes over there to his left, at his left arm, because uh, it goes down to the TV in the living room. Okay, here's where we start seeing some wires pull up. So you pull them one at a time and get them, get them tight that way, up and out of the way. That is that brown wire. That was the thermostat wire. So we it was threw that down. So we ended up tying that up for the HVAC guys. There you go. It gets most of it tight. There's a couple wires I think that we don't show in the video the next day, uh, which will be the video after this when uh, we address that some more. And I had to go buy some more wire ties and. You know, we're larger ones to tie that bundle up. And there's an area where it changes elevation. So where he's at now, you see his head's up in the rafters, but when you walk down to the next section of the house, it's not. So I've got to tack that up so that it's not just hanging in midair. And I'm pulling, that's the 6-2 wire that feeds the air handler power wire. So I kind of pulled it out of the bundle and put it to the side. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a really good day. We'll catch you next time.